Would you bow your heads in prayer? Lord, as we gather around your word now, open my lips to speak that word faithfully and open our hearts to receive that word, to believe your word, to act on it in our daily lives. In your name we pray, amen. You know, in my um, last year at seminary, I delivered Domino's pizza. Now, that was back in the day when um, Domino's pizza guaranteed delivery within 30 minutes. Within 30 minutes from the time you ordered your pizza, we would have it at your door, or it was free. In the time, the year that I worked for Domino's, we never delivered a late pizza. Now, that's, that's in spite of the fact that sometimes we had three, four, I think one time I even had five stops to make on my route. Now, that means we drove dangerously. And in fact, it never happened to me, but a number of Domino's drivers had accidents. And that's why they don't make that guarantee anymore. I guess the, the closest equivalent to that today would be Amazon Prime. You know, sometimes I swear you just barely finish ordering something on Amazon Prime and the truck is out front <laughs> dropping it off. I know that's exaggeration, and that's, that's kind of had to end during this COVID-19 because Amazon is, is um, prioritizing getting the basic things that people need out quickly. But you know, there's one other who guarantees delivery, and that's our Lord. And that's what he promises to us in Psalm 91, verse 3, it says, For he will save you, and literally, it means deliver you. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Now, I think we can all easily describe what a deadly pestilence is, but I, I put a, a, a dictionary definition up here. A pestilence is a deadly and overwhelming disease that affects an entire community. Now you begin to see why this psalm fits, right? COVID-19 fits that description. But what's this thing called a fowler's snare? Well, fowler is a sportsman who pursues wild birds in order to capture or kill them. A fowler will often... Uh, uh, is, you know, disguise. He, oh, I, I skipped this part there. Forgive me for that. Who is the fowler, right? Who is the psalmist referring to? Well, the, the psalmist is referring to the devil. He's, he's the fowler. As his name tells us, he is the enemy. I love St. Peter in his first epistle. He says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The devil is the fowler. Fowler's snare. That's where my mind started to go a second ago. The fowler's snare is the trap that the fowler sets. And usually it's disguised. Because the fowler didn't want the 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 bird to see what it's about to get trapped in. So I, 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 brought, I put up here on the screen a, a picture, right? And you can see there a bird, and you can see the trap, and there's bait there, right? There's some bird seed. And the second that bird steps into the um, noose, it's going to trap that bird, and he'll be trapped. And then there's the other picture, right? Here's a bird that saw the bait but didn't see the net. and gets caught in the net. See, the, the fowler will design the snare 
and the bait to match the to match the bird that he's trying to catch. And oftentimes he will, he will pick a certain bait like for a, a bird of prey he will he will he will seek probably put in there maybe a rodent a rabbit even or a, a snake as bait for the bird. Well the devil's snares are much the same. They're deceptive. Jesus described Satan. He said he is a liar and the father of lies. He's like the father. He doesn't want us to know that we're about to step into a trap. He disguises it with his lies. And I just want you to think about, about what that's like. It's sort of like the frog in the kettle. You know the old story of the frog sitting in that water and it's slowly getting heated up and the frog feels more comfortable and relaxed as the water heats up hotter and hotter and doesn't even realize until it's too late that he's going to be boiled in that water. I want you to think about the lies we fall for. God wouldn't want me to stay in an unhappy marriage. Or if it feels good, how can it be wrong? Well, if no one knows, who am I hurting? And the lies go on and on, and we fall for those lies, just like that frog in the kettle, and we don't know we're in trouble until we're in trouble. Not only are they deceptive, the, 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 the devil's snares are de- designer snares. They are unique for each person. And he knows where your weaknesses are. And those snares are designed to entrap you and me and whatever our weaknesses are. And so I bet, I bet COVID-19 has provided for each of us a lot of different opportunities. Are you, are you somebody who... Um, struggles with wanting to be in control? I bet this is hard, being up against a situation where you can't be in control. Are you somebody who who struggles with alcohol? Well, you know, alcoholism is on the rise during this time. Sales are up in the liquor stores. Are you somebody who struggles with a bad temper? I don't imagine that the frustration this time is making it any easier. In fact, on one of those calls I was on the other day, The judge said that spousal abuse and child abuse is rising astronomically during this time. Are you a worrier? Well, COVID-19 has sure provided a lot of opportunity for that, hasn't it? Worry about your family, worry about your health, worry about your job, worry about the economy. I, I think the list of things that you could be worrying about is endless. There's a, a fellow that told me the other day, or not a while ago, actually, he said, you know, I, I used to tell little white lies. Because I, I didn't want to hurt people's feelings, I didn't want to make them feel bad, so I just kind of stretched the truth. But pretty soon I didn't even know I was telling those lies. And telling those little white lies made it easier to tell big lies, and that's when I got in trouble. That's when the snare snapped shut, and I couldn't lie myself out of it. St. Paul warns us about this. He says, for what I do is not the good that I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do, that I keep on doing, O wretched man that I am. See, the problem, the real problem, the real danger isn't the pandemic. The real danger is the danger to your soul and to my soul. The real danger is the fowler's snare covered and hidden beneath the pandemic. So that means the urgent question, as much as we want this other question asked, the the urgent question is not, when will they come up with a vaccine? The urgent question is not, when can we go back to work or when can we we go back to church? Although we all want those questions answered, no, the urgent question is the one that Paul 
asks and answers right here. Who will rescue me from this? Who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. As important as it is to know who the Father is, even more important it is to know who the Deliverer is. It's Jesus. Right? Well, I know that there are a lot of people right now who who think that uh, this whole pandemic has ruined our Lent and Holy Week and Easter because it just wasn't the way it always is. But I'm, I'm going to tell you that I disagree with that. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. For one thing, you can't ruin. You can't distract. You can't lessen the powerful message of Good Friday and Easter. It's impossible. But in fact, I would say to you, I would say to you that this pandemic has amplified the message of Good Friday and Easter. It's made that message more important than it's ever been. Think about the contrast that we have right now between the doom and gloom of this pandemic on the one side and the hope and the joy and the victory of Easter. God is making crystal clear how great a salvation he won for us by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, I've told you before that my sister passed away on Christmas Eve, my oldest sister. And I've had people ask me, didn't that that ruin Christmas for you? And the answer is, um, no, it didn't. Because by my sister dying on Good Friday, I mean on Christmas Eve, God made crystal clear to me. He made obvious to me, this is why Jesus was born. Jesus was, came into this world so that my sister could have victory over death. Jesus came into this world so that my family could have hope in the midst of our grief. That's what God is doing for you and me right now. It's not by accident that this has all happened right now. God is making clear, this is why I gave my son. This is why Jesus was born in Bethlehem. This is why he lived in this world. This is why he died on the cross. This is the meaning of his resurrection. Since the children share in flesh and blood, Jesus likewise partook of the same, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery through his, this fear, their fear of death. This is how God kept his promise. By these saving acts, he delivered us from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. See, God carries out that deliverance in two ways. First, our Lord protects us from getting caught in the fowler's snare. Now, you were one of the prayers that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer is this lead us not into temptation. And that's a prayer that He answers. We're saying, don't let us get into that snare. And I want you to hear this promise from from St. Paul. St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. More often, that way out is going to be a word from God. You know, that's what, that's what Jesus leaned on when he was tempted by the devil. He went to the word. Sometimes it's going to be a friend whose wisdom helps you to recognize a trap, or a, a brother or sister in Christ speaking the truth in love, helping you to avoid a tragic mistake in your walk in this world. So he keeps you from getting caught. But you know what else? When you do kick fall, he sets you free. 
He opens the trap and lets you go. He forgives your sins. You know that passage where it said, uh, Wretched man that I am, who will save me? Jesus Christ. Well, the next verse is, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I want you to think for a minute about the woman that they brought to Jesus, caught in adultery. Remember how he delivered her? Neither do I condemn you, he said. From now on, sin no more. He protects us. He sets us free. And then finally, one more time. This is a guaranteed delivery. Jesus promises that he has delivered us. You know, the other night at PLT, we were towards the end of the meeting talking about the fact that we can have confidence in God, even in the midst of this pandemic. And one of your leaders said, you know, that's right, Pastor. Think about Easter. Jesus rose from the dead. He conquered death. He can conquer anything. He can conquer this pandemic. And that's why as in the sermon today, I've, I've chosen to use the translation of this passage from the New International Version because I love the very first word. It says, surely. Surely means certainty. Without a doubt, we can bank on it. Surely, he says, he will save you. He will deliver you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. If that isn't guaranteed delivery, I don't know what is. After all, what do we know? We know Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which pass all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus into life that is everlasting. Amen.